Well, the first NWCA All-Star Classic took place back in 1967 in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Originally, it was called the East-West All-Star Classic. Then 2014, last year in Philly. Well, this year, we're going to be heading to Atlanta, Georgia for the 50th edition. Here to talk about it, Wrestlers of Business Network founder, John Licata. John, welcome back. It's a banner year for the 50th edition of the All-Star Classic. We are so blessed. We're just so grateful to be involved in this event. And uh, and the fact that it's a signature event, the 50th, makes it all the more special, Scott. Since you've taken over the event, Wrestlers and Business Network has taken over the management of the event. The event has not only become uh, 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 successful, but profitable as well in that your de- uh, your design, your idea is to make money with the event and then benefit the sport. Talk a bit about that. Yes, I mean we, we do want to make some money. We want to have a great event. Uh, we don't want to make money at the at the expense of all the pageantry and treating the all stars the way they should be. But nonetheless, you know, we, we do want to make some money, which we do, because then we could give that back to the community, and that's a nice thing. I mean, that's you know, we're Santa Claus, we're sort of Robin Hood. Giving back sort of helps us build our brand. You know, we don't ask for money; we give money. You know, that's that's part of our give back to the community and part of our proposition for the classic and just wrestlers and business in general. So it's a celebration of the sport, celebration to kick off the beginning of the collegiate season, which we all wait for uh, with amazing. Uh, I mean, it's amazing how it builds. But guys like Rob Laramore and I go back to William and Mary. Uh, Rob was a good wrestler, wasn't a great wrestler by any stretch of the imagination, but he's become an incredible leader, a great businessman. I, I knew Rob, you know, I remember watching Rob when he was a, a little high, high school ankle biter running around. Uh, he was actually Steve Martin's high school teammate, had a great high school coach, uh, Kempsville High School. And he was a, he was an excellent college wrestler. He was an All-American. And uh, but I'll tell you, as good a wrestler as he was, he was tough on top. He was relentless, if I recall. There you go. Um, he is a, he is an even better leader and professional and, and business person. And, and really, that's what typifies what wrestlers and business is all about. It's it's engaging the professional community for the purposes of, you know, supporting each other, doing business with each other, hiring each other, and ultimately, you know, giving back on the sport. Ultimately, we, we bring these people in, in back to the sport in a professional fashion, and it just reflects well on the community. Now, people have commented to me that Georgia Tech and the campus of does not have a collegiate wrestling team. Um, and my argument about why we should have it on college campuses where there is no wrestling is that we can open up the eyes of the athletic de- director well, of the and, athletic and, department. Scott, thank you. And, and that's weighed on us. I mean, we, we, were, we, we had some reservations and discussion of, you know, why do we want to bring it on a campus that isn't engaged with wrestling? But you know what? When our people go on campus and they see the quality people that we have, they see our community at its best. Um, there's, it gives them reason and pause. Why don't you have a program? And, uh, and, and why, sh- what, what, why, sh- why should you have one? Because ultimately, having an Olympic sport on campus doesn't bring in a lot of money, if any. You know, but those administrators are challenged to have good people around their campus. And we, have, we don't have good people. We have great, great people. people. And, and Rob Laramore and, and our in our Atlanta chapter, you know, is is uh, it, you know resembles that. So you've got guys like Rob, Bud Hannibal, um, uh, Randy Kawa, Takedown Sportswear, uh, Dustin Kawa, uh, great people. And I'm, I'm not going to name everybody in the Atlanta chapter, but they have pulled together a great team effort. As a matter of fact, you guys at the Wrestlers and Business Network, the NWCA, have landed. Uh, but some it's a it's a coup. Let's just let's yeah. call for what it is. You're yeah. broadcasting this live on ESPNU, uh, something that hasn't been done a live event on on television in years. Well, you know, first of all, I'd say our Atlanta chapter has a a GNP greater than probably ninety five percent of the countries in the world. But uh, that that aside, um, we 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 are the classic will be televised live on ESPNU. It's it's only the second. It, uh, uh, event wrestling event that's live. Now, how does that happen? How does a bunch of volunteers who aren't fully focused on this? I mean, it's not our, our our vocation. It's not our livelihood. How do we? How are we able to get it on TV when others can't? 
It's all about the people. I mean, there's a financial commitment that, that we're making, you know, no doubt about it. It's, and it's not inexpensive, but, it, but more so than anything else, it's about the people. And, and that was part of the strategy going into this. You know, Rob said, it's going to be live on TV. I said, I don't know, Rob. Hey, it's, it's live. It's doing it. You know, it's, it's not going to be broadcast at 11 o'clock at night. You know, it's going to be broadcast live 5 o'clock ESPNU prime Love time. It. Love it. You know, that, that's that leadership quality of Rob and people like Rob. People like you, John, you didn't stand by and say, oh, the wrestlers and business isn't going to work. You know, you've been able to to team up with great leaders in all the business communities, including Cleveland, where it all started, um, and many of the other communities, Philadelphia, Iowa, et cetera, where you've been able to bring people together uh, with one common goal, and that is to do business with each other. And it, it, Scott, it's, it's all about the people. It's the collective efforts of many. You know, I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but, I, I you know, I... I I, one thing I, I take pride in is, you know, uh, having having the ability to get good people rowing the boat in the right direction. And we're doing it all over the country, you know, in a volunteer fashion. I mean, there are I'm very proud of our board. I'm very proud of the quality people that are involved in our network. Hey, hey you're one of them. You're, you're one of them. You know, oh, by the way, I know you're going to be you're going to you, you and, and Sandy are, are going to be broadcasting down at the event. Um you know, thank you for volunteering, Scott. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's I'm as excited about the beginning of the season, and and uh, if my voice can help, I'm proud to be there along with Sandy Stevens, uh, the first lady of of wrestling. It's it's always a pleasure. How about the competition, though? You are inviting some of the best from around the country. One of the names that comes right off the page at me is Illinois uh, superstar 157 Isaiah Martinez. Yeah, uh, Martinez is. Uh... You know, he may be a prodigy. I mean, he won it as a freshman, and, you know, there, there aren't too many four-time national champs. I know, you know, uh, that he has his sights set, set on that. You know, he's wrestling a real tough kid out of the gate. I mean, that's, you know, one of, the, one of the things that's a challenge with this is it's an NCAA, you know, semifinal or better level wrestling uh, competition, your first match of the year. I mean, these kids don't start practicing formally until the 10th. So they only have three weeks to get ready for this. And I realize, you know, these athletes are training all year round. But, but you know, they're putting it on the line. They're volunteers as well. I mean, these, these studs, these all-stars, you know, they put it on the line. They put it on the line. And they're doing it, they're doing it for the betterment of the sport. You know, they don't have to do it. It's a volunteer, volunteer situation. I think we treat them good. We try to make them feel great and like the all-stars that they are. But ultimately, they're deciding whether they want to come or their coach, their coach is. And it's a challenge. This year has been a challenge a little bit because of, you know, a, a number of the kids are taking Olympic red shirts. And, uh, you know, you know we, we have it on prime time. We want to put our best foot forward. You we bet. want this to resonate well within the community and outside the community so a school maybe like uh, Georgia Tech will, uh, will open up their eyes or other schools like that. John Licata joins us. You've got two great big guys that are going to be uh, uh, tying it up, as it were, on the mat. Uh, Kuhn from Michigan and Virginia Tech's Waltz. Man, this is going to be a great battle of two big guys who have their eyes on the prize, and that, of course, an NCAA championship at the end of the year. Yeah, but, you know, I, I'm, I live in Virginia. I'm a Pennsylvanian by birth, but I, you know, I live in this great wrestling state of Virginia. It's nice to see Tech and Old Dominion and, and, and UVA and ha have, have, you know, that local talent in that, you know, the teams that I root for in my community. Um, but uh, it's, it's great to see, uh, you know, Michigan here and, you know, young, young, young kid like that. It'll, you know, easily those two guys might wind up in the finals this year. And, of course, we're going to see other great schools represented. Oklahoma State will be there, at least in uh, two of their uh, exciting young studs as well. We're talking with John Licata. The NWCA All-Star Classic comes up in Atlanta, Georgia, November 1st at the McCamish Pavilion. Tickets are on sale now. We invite you to check out their Facebook, and it's facebook.com slash events. And uh, look for the NWCA All-Star Classic on Facebook. You can also go to the Wrestlers and Business Network, which we encourage you to become a member of no matter where you are in the country. If there's no chapter near you, we invite you to talk to Licata and the 
the guys and, and establish a chapter in your area. That's how we grow wrestling. The last time the NWCA Classic was, was held was in Philadelphia, and the event turned out some incredible people. I'm talking about fans. Wrestling is always going to be great, but we had great fan support in Philadelphia. I remember the year we were on the George Mason campus at the Patriot Center. That was a one. I mean, do you remember the band? Do you oh, remember the band that was playing? I wish we could duplicate that. It's been tough. Yeah. You know, it was, they it was, had a great value to it. There is another value, and, and I don't know if we put enough light on this. You start the uh, Saturday morning off. Yeah with a, a great clinic, and I know that Wade Chalice organizes it, but the idea is, is to celebrate the sport, educate, entertain, and inform, right? It, it absolutely is. I, there, there's no better group of clinicians than what we have at the Classic and, and Wade assembles. So to be a clinician, you have to have been a national champion. You've had to wrestle in the Classic. You have to be an Olympian or coach one of the kids who are competing. Um, this year adds uh, another dynamic to it because uh, we're doing something a little different. Every person who ever wrestled in the Classic has been invited back. They're not all coming back, but we've invited them. We researched it, and invitations went out. So some of those legends will be at our clinic, will be, will be doing their thing at the clinic. In addition, you know, we, the, the, the other festival act activity we have is our social. Yeah. And this year it's going to be a legend social. So all those legends who are coming in town are, are going to be mingling with the crowd at the Classic. And we think that's something that we can build on going forward, something that we're going to continue to do and make it part of, you know, the, the wrestlers do their thing. If the wrestling is the wrestling, it's going right. to be great. But it's creating the environment where we can come together socially, professionally, have a great time and build relationships so we can do great things back in our community. What better way to salute the growth of wrestling in the state of Georgia and the high school level, the USA Kids level, at the collegiate level? Since 2009, Shorter, Truett McConnell, yep. Bruton Parker have added men's programs, and Life University and, and Emmanuel have added both men's and women's teams to their roster of varsity sports. So that's, in part, an answer as to why Georgia, why Atlanta, the fever, the pitch is running hard, it's running fast and running deep, and if we can catch it at the right time, I can see schools like the University of Georgia and Georgia Tech, the Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech, adding wrestling back to their offerings, and it's through events like this, John, that we can show them good and positive examples of why they should be doing that. You know, um, you mentioned, the, you know, the, those, those, the locale there. Um, doing something a little different this year. This I, I can't take any credit for this. We'll see how it works. But um, on the, in the, in the uh, undercard matches, we're actually bringing in some local kids who are at colleges. So Edinburgh, UVA, UNC. Um, we're bringing kids in who wrestled in high school in that southeast area to, to create some excitement. They haven't quite built their resume on a national level yet. But we thought that would be interesting. We'll see see how that how that goes. You know, Georgia. I, I just saw an article where it said Georgia has the third most professional football players in the NFL. They have great athletes. There's no reason why Georgia wrestling, you know, can't can't rival you know what what we have in in some of the traditional states like Pennsylvania, you know, Ohio, Iowa. They have the athletes, and it's just creating that excitement where kids want to be involved in something. I mean, that's that's what we try to do with the Classic is, is put it in that type of light. It'd be interesting to know how many of those uh, NFL players or professional football players at any level, AFL, IFL, uh, uh, Canadian League, or the NFL, actually wrestled. And if you go back to Paul Bear Bryant, he insisted his players wrestle or have some experience in wrestling, if, if, if anything, for the durability, the lateral movement, the strength and conditioning that wrestlers bring, the never-say-quit type attitude. I mean, uh, Coach Bryant was, was so smart in that regard. How many former wrestlers? I mean, look at Stephen Neal and his performance coming out of Cal State Bakersfield and going to the Patriots for 10 years. Well, well you know, you know that they know how to work. You're not going to teach them how to work. And more importantly, they know how to compete. I mean, they, they do. That's the absolute truth. John Licata has been our guest. He's been in the Nike hot seat today. I'm going to invite you folks another time. 
to join us at the Wrestlers and Business Network online. It's wrestlersandbusiness.org. There you're going to find a banner, and that banner will proudly proclaim the 50th annual NWCA All-Star Classic as it makes its way to November 1st, a special Sunday indeed. But I want you to make plans to spend the weekend with us in Atlanta, Georgia. It's hosted by the Wrestlers and Business Network Atlanta chapter, and what better place to have it than the McCamish Pavilion, the newly renovated. It is gorgeous. You folks are going to love everything. Every minute of it. You get to the website, get to the ticket information there at the wrestlersandbusiness.org website as well. John, it's always good to talk to you. We appreciate the time and all the great work you put into this. And we challenge you and all the rest of the Wrestlers and Business Network to have a great time while you're doing this as well. Hey, it's a, Atlanta's a hot land, is a fun town. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to have a great time. John, thanks for the time today. Thank you so much, Scott. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown Wrestling, my very special guest on the Nike Hot Seat today, John Licata, founder of the Wrestlers and Business Network.